Hello, my name is Julius Eggebrecht and I have the honor to present the poster Safety and Tolerability in Patients with Multiple Sclerosis Receiving Ocrelizumab in a Real-World Setting, Confidence, One-Year Interim Analysis. Here you can see the other authors along with the disclosures. So, CONFIDENCE is a non-interventional post-authorization safety study collecting real-world safety and effectiveness data for up to 10 years for people with MS, newly treated with ocrelizumab and other selected disease-modifying therapies. And here I will present the results of an interim analysis of safety data from patients treated with ocrelizumab. In short, CONFIDENCE aims to enroll 3,000 patients with RMS or PPMS newly treated with ocrelizumab and 1,500 patients newly treated with other selected disease-modifying therapies. The study visits are documented approximately every six months. And this analysis included patients with one baseline visit and two follow-up visits, so approximately one year of treatment. As of 17th of August um, 2020, 2,227 patients have been recruited for ocrelizumab treatment in the CONFIDENCE study, and of which uh, 559 are included in this interim analysis. And patients with RMS were on average younger and had a longer time since first MS symptoms and diagnosis than patients with PPMS. And you can see that most patients with RMS had at least one prior disease-modifying therapy during their course of disease. The most common disease-modifying therapies were interferon, beta, fingolimod, and natalizumab. And approximately one-third of patients with PPMS had a prior disease-modifying therapy, most commonly immune modulators such as interferon, beta, and glatiramer acetate. Here you can see that um, patients with PPMS had a higher baseline EDSS score than patients with RMS. The most frequent adverse events and serious adverse events in patients with RMS were infections and infestations and nervous system disorders. The most frequent adverse events in patients with PPMS were infections and infestations and nervous system disorders, while the most frequent serious adverse events in these patients were nervous system disorders. There were three cases of malignancies, all in patients with RMS. During this analysis, one patient died. This was of an unknown cause. No deaths were reported due to infections or malignancies. Overall, six patients with RMS discontinued treatment, two due to adverse events and one due to death. A single patient with PPMS discontinued treatment because of withdrawal by patient. The most common serious infections in patients with RMS were urinary tract infections, pneumonia, and pyelonephritis. The two serious infections in patients with PPMS were urinary tract infection and an encephalitis. So, all in all, one can say that confidence represents a real-world cohort of MS patients. At baseline, patients with RMS and PPMS and confidence were on average 7 and 8 years older, respectively, than those in the pivotal trials. Patients with RMS had higher, while patients with PPMS had a slightly lower mean baseline EDSS score than patients in the pivotal trials, and most patients in confidence had comorbidities. However, few patients in this analysis experienced events such as serious infections or treatment-related SAEs. Malignancies occurred in three patients with RMS. No new or unexpected AEs were observed in this interim analysis. Please find effectiveness outcomes presented separately at this Congress. At this point, I would like to thank everybody who contributed to the study. And thanks a lot for all your attention and have a good time at the ECF meeting.